Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Got a post on our Focal Point Facebook page from Mary. By the way, you go to the Focal Point Facebook page, I'll like that page and encourage your friends to like it as well. But Mary uh, writes this. Yes, she agrees with me about the poisoning corrosive effect. Yes, I can't think of one show that I follow. I got caught up in one show until someone on AFR talked about it and made me think, oh my, a Christian thinking. Isn't that the most dangerous type of citizen? Exactly right. In other words, what she's saying, you know, she's one of these people that got kind of lulled to sleep and didn't realize how her view of life and values in the world was being changed very gradually, very subtly, one episode uh, at a time. You know, and I mentioned this before that there was a study that was done of people who were asked about their values before they watched a movie that had a political agenda. Now, the people didn't know that the movie had a political agenda. The people doing the research did. And they wanted to see what kind of effect it would have for them to be exposed to this movie, just a dramatic movie or a thriller or something like that, but with a clear political agenda. Subtle, but, uh, but evident. So they asked these people a bunch of questions designed to kind of reveal their worldview before they had them watch the movie. Then they go in, they have them watch the movie, they come out, and they give them the same test again. And they discovered that and, and the, the political message of this particular movie was a liberal, it was a progressive political message. And when these people came out of that movie two hours later, their political worldview had changed. It had moved. The needle had budged. Maybe it wasn't dramatic. Maybe it was small. But there had been a seismic, even though it might have been tiny, a seismic shift in their worldview. And the researchers explained that what happens, you know, this is why Mary is saying, look, I realized I just was not thinking analytically. I wasn't thinking critically about what I was seeing because what these researchers determined, what they discovered, is that when people go to the movies, let's say, the same thing would true, be true if you're watching television. You, you sort of put your mind in neutral. You put your critical thinking faculties in neutral. I just want to be entertained. I just want to enjoy. I want something to go with my popcorn and my Coke. I'm not drinking the Diet Coke because I hear it's bad for your heart. So I'm drinking the straight stuff, and I'm having the buttered popcorn because I found that that's all builds, that that's bad for you. So I just want an entertaining movie to go along with my popcorn and my Coke. And so you kind of check your critical faculties at the door, which means you're not, you're, your guard is not up. Your guard is down. You're not thinking critically. You're not, and who wants to go to a movie and think critically? I mean, who wants to do that? You go to the movies to be entertained. You want to think, you go to, a, you, you go to school. So you want to be entertained. And so very subtly things can uh, begin to influence the way you think. Now, one other uh, soundbite. The number to call, by the way, is 888-589-8840. If you would like to join the conversation, 888-589-8840. Uh, now, along this line, uh, you know, I've used the expression, the gay Gestapo. Uh, I've been using that for years. Recently, uh, Tammy Bruce, who's a lesbian activist, she used it in a column that she wrote. And she was talking about the way that homosexual activists are landing like a falling safe on religious liberty, going after that baker in Oregon, for instance, to force him to provide service against his will. She said that is slavery. That is involuntary servitude. There's nothing American about that whatsoever. And she says, look, if you compel him, which they want to do to compel him to do it in violation of his conscience then that is what she called abject tyranny. And she used the term gay Gestapo. I don't know if she picked it up from me somewhere along the line or got it from somebody else, but it's a term that she used. So this is a lesbian that used this term, a lesbian activist who is a supporter of same-sex marriage. And she says, look, this is Gestapo-like tactics we're seeing from homosexual activists. Now, another illustration of that, Comes And I talked about this yesterday, but I want to just bring one other aspect into it and play a, a, a CBS news story on this, clip number seven, Rob, is, uh, you know, we talked yesterday about the CEO at Mozilla, the new guy. His name is Brad uh, Ike. Now, this guy's brilliant. He invented JavaScript, which is the basis for most of what happens on the web. So a brilliant guy, been with Mozilla for 15 years. In 2008, 
he gave a one thousand dollar a one thousand dollar donation to a excuse me to an organization that was working to protect natural marriage. The organization was called the National Organization for Marriage. A one thousand uh, dollar donation in two thousand and eight. That's six years ago. He just was recently promoted to the position of CEO at Mozilla. They make the Firefox browser. That's the main one that that I use. A lot of people use Chrome. I got a Chromebook for an HP Chromebook for Christmas. So that that uh, little laptop uses Chrome as the browser. But on my office computer, I use Firefox. I like it, and I've used it uh, for years. Anyway, he's uh, this is the company that invented that, developed it, and and markets it. Now, he wants to be the CEO, and the gay Gestapo, I mean, the lynch mobs are out. They want to lynch this guy. I mean, this is a high-tech lynching because they want him out. They want him to resign. They want him to resign in dust and ashes. They want to tar him. They want to feather him. They want to run him out of town on a rail, whatever that means. I have no idea what it means to run somebody out of town on a rail. Maybe you put him on the next train out of town or something. But anyway, that's what they want to do to this guy uh, in the Silicon Valley guy. Now, he's been asked where he stands, and he says, look, it's irrelevant. You know, my personal position uh, on this is irrelevant, which tells me he probably still agrees that marriage is the union of one man and one woman. He probably still believes that in his heart, but he can't say it because he's afraid of what people are going to do to him. This goes back to what we saw with uh, Paul's uh, confrontation with Peter where Paul had the courage to confront Peter. Peter did not have the courage to confront the people he was afraid were going to disapprove of him and disapprove of his uh, behavior. And so Brad Ike just does not have the courage to tell people what he actually believes because I think he still believes it. Or he would say, no, I've changed my mind. I'm happy. I'm fine with same-sex marriage. And instead, he's apologized. He won't tell people what he thinks. Now, here's another a wrinkle to this. And the wrinkle to this is that the gay Gestapo never should have even known about this contribution. And this shows you that the other side, I'm not saying that conservatives don't do this too because they can, but it's a stock and trade of progressives, of political liberals to cheat, to play dirty. Uh, we just uh, seen this raft of, a, of arrests for liberal political leaders on corruption charges. One guy, this Democratic senator, very prominent Democratic senator in California by the name of Yee, big-time anti-gun, always sponsoring anti-gun legislation, big-time supporter of gun control. Guns are terrible. Guns kill people. we got to get guns out of our neighborhoods and all that. And then he was arrested by the FBI for gun running, getting shoulder-fired weapons into the hands of Muslim radicals in the Philippines. And these uh, shoulder-fired weapons and all these other advanced munitions coming into the United States on their way to the Philippines. He was getting them from Russia and who knows where else. They were coming into the United States, and then he was being the middleman to ship them off to these Muslim radicals in the Philippines. So that means they're on American soil and therefore intended for Muslims. I mean, what is to stop him from cooperating with Muslim groups in the United States that mean us harm to get their hands on a portion of those shipments? So anyway, uh, so it's just stock and trade for liberals to cheat. Got a big voter fraud story out of North Carolina. Thousands and thousands and thousands examples of likely voter fraud. Dead people voting. And you wonder why we think that voter ID is a good idea, photo ID to vote. There is an example of it right there in North Carolina. Now, anyway, what happened with Brad Ike is that the National Organization for Marriage, and I've run a nonprofit organization, so I know how, I know how this works, is you have to furnish them, and this is supposed to be private information, but you have to furnish them with the names of your major donors over a certain level. Now, this is not public information. If you go on the Form 990, which you have to turn into the IRS, and which the IRS posts on their website, you can go and look at the 990 form for a nonprofit organization. It's got to be there. But the identity of your major donors is not for public consumption. That's for the IRS and for the IRS alone. Now, why they need it or want it or entitled to it is beyond me. I think that's a terrible idea to, to begin with. But there it is. And this, it's a, it's a crime to reveal that information. That's criminal behavior. If you reveal the information, the identity of donors to these nonprofit organizations, that is a crime. Now, what happened is somebody committed a crime. Somebody with access to IRS insider information released the list of donors to gay, the gay Gestapo. 
The gay Gestapo got hold of it, and they went through that list with a fine-tooth comb. They found Brad Ike's name on there. They knew they recognized his name, that he was Silicon Valley. He was part of uh, Mozilla, the Firefox people, the JavaScript guy. And so they made trouble for him as soon as they found this out. So uh, once again, this never would have happened if you had people obeying the law, which just shows you the, you know, the, the last people in the world who want to give any more power to is the IRS. By the way, we found out today that Remember, we had talked to you about those C-4 regulations that they were being proposed by the IRS. It was going to crack down on, on C-4 groups. That would be a crackdown on the American Family Association. We would not be allowed to, to, uh, uh, to, to engage in voter registration drives. We would not be allowed to engage in voter turnout drives. We would not be allowed to provide voters' guide for interested, concerned citizens. All of that would jeopardize our C-4 status. 150,000 comments were generated. More than 10% of those came from this network alone, the AFA uh, network. We even had calls from major media outlets when that first broke, wanting to know what our secret was. How did you get so many people to weigh in? We noticed that uh, you, the, you are the organization that produced the second greatest number of comments to the IRS on this C4 thing. Tell us why you're concerned and so forth. Uh, and they have backed off. The IRS commissioner, name is John Koskin, and he said today at the National Press Club, we got 150,000 comments. This is an all-time record. We've never had this many, uh, and it's going to take us time uh, to go through uh, what we've got there. W to process these comments, it's going to take us at least through the end of the year, so nothing is going to happen until next year. And then he was talking about the possibility of reproposing these regulations, bringing them back. And, uh, you know, we issued a statement, Tim Wildman issued a statement, man, these these proposed regulations should not be reproposed. They ought to be taken straight to the nearest landfill, never to be seen again. So anyway, I just wound up chewing up the time I needed to play the soundbite. So we'll play the soundbite. CBS uh, getting on this uh, deal about Brad Ike and Mozilla Firefox, the gay Gestapo, uh, out in force to try to take him out. And, and the gay Gestapo is saying, look, this is not a private matter. You want to say it's a private matter, private donation? Uh, private expression speech, sir, that's not a private matter. You, your gift was erroneous. It was flawed. It was hateful. you got to repent in dust and ashes. Focal Point AFR Talk.